On CBS, Robin Ladies Blake against Terry Arroyo. Let's go to Michael welcome Buffer. Welcome to the main event of the afternoon from Atlantic City, New Jersey. Top Rank Incorporated, in cooperation with Resorts International Casino Hotel, presents a scheduled 10-round lightweight bout. This bout is sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Commission. The referee for this contest is Arthur Mercanti. And now in the blue corner, ranked number 15 by the World Boxing Council as a super lightweight with an undefeated record of 22 victories, 17 knockouts, weighing in at 135 and one half pounds in the white trunks with black trim from Youngstown, Ohio, Harry Arroyo. And in the red corner, Ranked number seven by the World Boxing Association with a record of 22 wins and only one loss, 16 big knockouts, weighing in at 135 and one half pounds in the pink trunks from Lubbock, Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, rockin' Robin Blake. And in New Jersey, Good afternoon, Robin and Harry. You both know in New Jersey. We've New got, Jersey uh, of course, Gill scoring on a round system. Yes, sir. Uh, you have to win the round. Makes no difference how big you, you win it. It's one round in the bank if you win a round. Shake hands. Good luck. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape. Comparison of these two men. Robin Blake, five years younger than Harry Arroyo, and he's one inch taller. They both weighed in at 8 o'clock this morning at 135 and a half. And the reach advantage will go to Harry Arroyo at 72 and three quarters inches as opposed to 69 and one half. Well, we have two tall lightweights, Vern. Of course, Blake is the southpaw. Arroyo fights the orthodox style. Very, very well matched. Arroyo was probably a better defensive fighter than Blake, and I think Blake carries a lot more firepower. And these early rounds so critical for Harry Arroyo because of his reputation as being a very slow starter, and Robin Blake has been known to pounce on you like a panther. Now, this fight could be set very early, Vern. It depends on how Arroyo has been taught to fight a southpaw. How difficult is it to make that change? Well, it's, it's, a, it's really solid concentration. You have to concentrate every second. You should, you should be keeping your left foot outside his right foot so that he can't get set, set to hit you with a combination. There, Arroyo moved the, the right way, took the firepower away from Robin Blake. Well, I'm sure Sugar Ray Leonard is watching this fight out of Reno, and he told me once he'd rather do anything than fight a southpaw. Well, you know, there's a, there's a saying in boxing that southpaw should be drowned. Oh, right. A good right hand by Arroyo. A solid right punch. Hand. He's got Blake in trouble in the corner. Now, we were talking about Arroyo being a slow starter. Look at this. Another right hand. Solid right hand by Harry Arroyo. Robin Blake is dazed. Now the counter punches, and he landed a solid right. They, they, now they both know that they can, the other guy can punch. Blake's face is already bright red. Round one of a scheduled 10 rounder. Biggest payday of his life for Harry Arroyo. He's 26 years of age. He is one of 16 children. He's getting paid something in the vicinity of 45,000 for this fight. He said his best next payday was 10,000 really hasn't attracted that much national attention, has he, Gil? Well, he's fought a lot of fights in Youngstown, Ohio. He's been on, on the national television against Joe Lewis Manley, who at that time was a great prospect, and he eked out a decision over him. One minute remaining, first round. Good left hook by Arroyo. Arroyo is a good, solid defensive fighter. He is scoring points here in the first round. The major mistake he can make, though, Vern, is, is to get overconfident and start to punch, punch for punch with Robin Blake. Blake's hands are a little faster and snaps his punches a little better. He should keep moving, picking his spots the way he's been doing this round. Good right. 30 seconds to go, round number one. They're standing right directly in front of each other. And the right hand by Arroyo. Seems to have found the mark. Surprised? Slightly surprised. I, he usually doesn't start this fast. 
Another right hand by Arroyo. It's been a great round for Harry Arroyo of Youngstown, Ohio. It certainly is a big bun. It's a very big bun. Big fluffy bun. It's a very big fluffy bun. Where's the beef? Some hamburger places give you a lot less beef on a lot of bun. Where's the beef? At Wendy's, we serve a hamburger we modestly call a single. And Wendy's single has more beef than the Whopper or Big Mac. At Wendy's, you get more beef and less bun. Hey, where's the beef? I don't think there's anybody back there. You want something better. You're Wendy's kind of people. Second round from Atlantic City, New Jersey. Vern Lundquist along with Gil Clancy. Robin Blake and Harry Arroyo having at each other. And a solid first round for Harry Arroyo. However, in Arroyo's corner, Ed Sullivan told him, he said, when you're fighting a banger, he said, exactly as we were talking about, he said, don't get overly ambitious. Keep going in and out. Look for your spots. Blake is very, very hesitant now. He's, he's been jolted by a few of those punches. And he, twice now he started to get off and just wasn't able to get off. He did feel the thrust of those punches from Arroyo in round number one. Landed a couple himself, but he does look tentative. Second round. Excuse you know, me, Gil. Arroyo was fighting bigger men. He was fighting as a junior welterweight. And the, the fact that he made this lightweight uh, 136 half and a half pounds so easily it may have helped him because now it's a little smaller guy. You don't get hit quite as hard. Interesting, there was a question about his fierceness. He's such a nice guy. And, and even his own corner, Ed Sullivan and Don Hill, his attorney, said he may be too even-tempered to take on a guy like Robert Blake. He doesn't show that at all. Both, both these kids are well schooled, Vern. Both have very solid amateur backgrounds. For example, Arroyo was in with guys like Johnny Bumpus, beat Duan Johnson in the amateurs, beat Bobby Joe Young in the amateurs. Uh, he's, he, he's got his feet wet, and Robin Blake the same way. Robin Blake won the World Junior Championships in Yokohama, Japan at the age of 17 in 1979. I was there, and I'm a native Texan. Looked down, he said, what in the world are you doing here? The only loss he sustained as an amateur, we're speaking of Robin Blake, was against an East German Olympic medalist in a tiny forlorn town of Schwerin, East Germany, behind the Iron Curtain in 1980. And here, Arroyo again. One minute to go, round number two. Arroyo, right at this moment, sees the power. He's, he's able to manhandle Blake and move him around. When he hits Blake, he moves him. Blake has not been able to move Arroyo as yet. the upper shoulder by Robin Blake. Well, Arroyo patiently waited for his big chance, and so far he's handling it very well. 30 seconds to go, second round. Harry Arroyo was laughing about two hours ago when I asked him about being even-tempered. He said, well, I trained part of the time in Marvin Hagler's camp to get ready for this fight, and they had bugs in my room. That'll make anybody nasty. <laughs> Marvin Hagler's folks to make sure the bedrooms are clean. Ten seconds to go. Round number two. Good, solid, lightweight fight. You are looking at live music as seen through a computer. The computer can freeze an instant of the music and mark it. Now, a Memorex High Bias 2 recording of the same music. Compare Memorex to live. You will not hear truer reproduction on any High Bias cassette. Not the first play, not the 1,000th, not ever, or we'll replace it free. Is it live, or is it Memorex? Round number three from Atlantic City, New Jersey. Harry Arroyo, Harry Arroyo went to the canvas at the end of round two, but it was a slip. Robin Blake against Harry Arroyo. Robin Blake in action for the first time since October 8th of last fall when he lost to Tyrone Crawley. And Crawley will be in action tomorrow on CBS from here in Atlantic City against Stevie Romero from San Jose. Blake is trying to put a lot more pressure on Arroyo now than he did the first two rounds. Burn. He's trying to come out of it. Coming at him like that, he can get nailed himself. Gil, you've watched Robin many times. Is he the kind of guy who tends to get discouraged if things don't go well for him early? Well, in the Crawley fight, he seemed to get discouraged, Vern. But up, up to that time, he always looked like a great competitor. Good finisher. You hit him, he came, he flared right back. 
but he seems to be having a lot of trouble with Harry Arroyo. Robin Blake had seven fights in 1983, and he said that uh, perhaps he had fought too much. That was part of the reason why he, that he wasn't ready for that trolley fight. Well, he said he took it on short notice, and that is a possibility. This fight right now, though, is he's, he's going to have to do something a little different. Arroyo is a lot better defensive fighter than Robin Blake. He keeps his hands up at all times. Robin has a tendency to fight with his face a little bit. Drops his hands. Just as a point of reference, Robin Blake has registered 16 knockouts in his 22 fights. But in all of his career, professional and amateur, Harry Arroyo has only been knocked down three times. Arroyo is a good defensive fighter. He fought Bobby Joe Young in the amateurs, who was a very good puncher. So I, I asked him, I said, Harry, did he ever hurt you in the fight? He says, no, because he never hit me. Robin Blake, Harry Arroyo. Youngstown, Ohio, against a native of Lubbock, Texas. Robin Blake now lives in Fort Worth and fights for Dave Gorman's stable, and they've got a growing bunch of outstanding fighters. The Curry Brothers, one minute to go, round number three. Here comes Arroyo. Yep. Well, his corner told him not to exchange with Blake, and I saw he, he threw that one punch, looked like he was going to get off again. He said, oh, wait, I better move over, and he did. He has fought a smart fight thus far. Yes, he has. Robin Blake showing just a little bit of puffiness below the left eye. Well, he's been nailed with some pretty good punches. 30 seconds to go, round number three. Good combinations by Blake. For last one. Arroyo came right back, flared right back, Brian. Good punches to the body and head. It has been an Arroyo fight thus far in his 10-round scheduled bout against Robin Blake of Fort Worth. You know, after being named MVP of the Super Bowl, you might think I'd become extravagant or flashy. Truth is, I'm still a down-to-earth guy. Just look at my new car, the new Ford Tempo from a Ford dealer. It may look like an expensive import, but it's not expensive. It's very practical with front-wheel drive, and it's very economical on gas. So you see, even though people may treat me like a big sports star, I don't act like one. To practice, sir. Have you driven the best-built American cars? Have you driven a Ford lately? In Robin Blake's corner between rounds, his manager, Dave Gorman, said, well, we did lose the first two rounds. Not so sure about the third. Well, uh, I thought Harry Royal had an edge in the third round. Very close, but I thought he also had an edge in the third round. As this fight has developed, Gil, are you surprised? Well, I was surprised at the fast start uh, that Harry Arroyo had. Uh, probably they were on him because he was he had always started so slowly before. Maybe they had him really warmed up in the dressing room told him, Harry, you better get out there, because he certainly did. This is round four of a scheduled 10-rounder. Both men weighed in at 135 and a half this morning. Harry Arroyo's last fight is here. He has knocked out his last four or five, four opponents. I've noticed that Robin Blake seems to be leaning back on his left foot a lot when, when, they're, when they're squaring off outside. He doesn't seem to be getting into a, a good, solid stance. You, you take a look, he's just leaning back on that left foot. He leans backwards. Good uppercut by Arroyo. Good exchange by Robin Blake here in the near corner. Arroyo is moving his head beautifully, though. He counter punched beautifully in that exchange. And he landed down on the chin of Robin Blake. Good combination again from Harry Arroyo. He's growing in confidence, Gil. You can just sense it. Now, now Blake is against the ropes. He's trying to invite Arroyo to exchange punches with him. Blake's trap of exchanging punches. He stayed patient, snapped that jab, and when Blake reached, he nailed it. Good smart fighter, Harry Arroyo. Very quietly said last night, he could not imagine anyone paying him a lot of money to fight another man. And he's not making an enormous amount out of this fight. One minute to go in round four. A great story, Harry Arroyo. The fifth youngest of 16 children, born to Theodore and Rosa Arroyo. 
Blake landed a good combination of Brian, but it didn't seem to bother Arroyo at all. See the way he can slip those punches? Very, very smooth. And patient. Again, he didn't get nailed. He keeps those hands up good and high. 30 seconds to go. He's had much the better of it. His really, his concentration is great. He just doesn't take any, he just leave, doesn't leave himself wide open, doesn't take any big chances. He rocked Rock and Robin again. The legend of Tony the Tiger. Big fish, come and get it. Same old grub again, Cookie. Me too. Frosted Flakes Partners? Isn't that, uh... Kitty food, stranger? <laughs> Way I reckon, Kellogg's Sugar Frosted Flakes have a taste you never outgrow. Mighty good. Some folks call them great. Much obliged, eh? Stranger, who was that striped man anyway? It's a taste you never outgrow. <laughs> Round number five, Robin Blake. And look at Arroyo, Gil Clancy, come immediately out of that corner and take charge. Well, they must have told him that he had Blake in trouble at the end of the round. Referee Arthur McCanty went over and took a good look at Blake. Now, in Blake's corner, they asked him if Arroyo hit hard, and he said no. Then they told him, well, you have to get inside and fight him inside. But the idea is how? How do you get inside against a smart fighter like Harry Arroyo? This is round five. Arroyo just slides back, very patient, waits, waits till Blake is wide open and is safe to throw punches, and then he gets rid of it. Oh, 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 oh. Not too much on him. No. He's planning a vacation. His mother and dad have got to Las Vegas. You see how patient he is here. He has, he has Blake on the ropes. He, he just won't fall into Blake's trap and reach him for him. And then lands with a good right. He has controlled the tempo, the pace of this fight, from the opening bell. Here's that patience again. Back out where he belongs, faint a little bit, set Robin up, back out again. He just won't stay inside, he won't stay still for Blake to nail him. There he stepped back again. It has been a puzzle for Robin Blake. Left hook. Joe Barrient is one of his trainers told Robin Blake air yeah, that hurt. Big left hook by Robin Blake. Didn't seem to, it didn't seem to move Arroyo at all. Though. Blake was told by Barrient is between rounds, you hit harder than any lightweight in the world, you've got to hit him. But I think the question you asked is pertinent now. That's right. And even when he did hit him, it has to be discouraging because nothing happened. And it looks like the only way Blake is going to get into this fight is to really nail Arroyo and maybe get him out of there. I don't think he can win on points. Keep in mind that it is a round system only. No points awarded here. In New Jersey. Interestingly enough, Arroyo said he boxed with Ray Mancini for two or three years. They both live in Youngstown. I asked him how he thought he'd do with Mancini, but he just uh, <laughs> he couldn't get it out of him. He sparred with Robbie Sims to get ready for this fight. I think you questioned the tactics there. Yes, sir, Robbie Sims is a very much improved junior middleweight. But sometimes when you box with a real good fighter, it's a lot heavier than you. You take something out of you. But it doesn't look like it bothered Arroyo at all. Great hand speed by Arroyo. Good combination. And he tagged Robin Blake again. Ten seconds to go in round number five. And we have been shocked here in Atlantic City, New Jersey. When an alkaline battery goes dead, you throw it away and buy a new one. This is a GE rechargeable. When it goes dead, you recharge it. It costs more than batteries you throw away, but lasts up to four years. Use 10 hours a week, this toy would use over 300 long life batteries to just two GE rechargeables. So if you're still throwing away batteries, you're throwing away a lot of money.
Round six from Atlantic City, Vern Lundquist and Gil Clancy. We listened to Ed Sullivan between rounds. Gil, I think he's been listening to you. <laughs> well, Vern, he said the only chance that Robin Blake has is to nail you with one big punch, and he's going to get desperate, and when a guy's desperate, he can be a little dangerous. So just take your time the way you've been doing. Harry Arroyo, 26 years of age, Robin Blake, 21. It has been all Arroyo's fight so far. To the surprise, I think, of most. I would have to say that it's just surprised everybody, uh, Vern. Arroyo's only other appearance on television was back in October of 82 against Dildalus Manley. He won a split decision in that bout here and really was on the undercard in that fight, wasn't he? That's right, but you have to remember again that Joe Lewis Manley was a junior welterweight and a good one. I mean, now he's back, he's dropped himself down to the lightweight limit. He looks very, very effective. He looks much bigger and stronger than uh, Robin. Arroyo just gives away one inch in height to Robin Blake, 5'10 against 5'11. Uh, there's Blake. Do not forget that he's got the power in those, in those fists, but look at the counter-punching from Arroyo. Didn't bother him at all. He got, hit with, he got hit with one of Blake's best punches. Didn't bother him at all. He's almost got a hint of a grin on his face. And Arroyo shown no signs of weariness so far. Appears in excellent condition. Well, he hasn't been pressed at all, though, Brian. He's had it all his own way. He said a couple of uh, moments ago that he and his wife, Elise, are heading for Las Vegas on a vacation. She has never met his folks. And the uh, parents of Harry Arroyo have moved to Las Vegas, Nevada, so they're going out there next week. See the way he sets Blake up, and it's very safe for him to throw the punch because Blake is in no position to punch, and then he unloads. Round six. One minute to go. Now, Harry let himself wide open that time. Reached out with that right hand, almost got nailed. Arthur McConty watching very closely. Robin Blake. Well, they're nailing each other now, Vern. All of those are landing on both sides of the aisle. 30 seconds to go, round number six. That's what Arroyo's corner did not want him to do. Don't let him back in the fight. There's a contingent from Youngstown, Ohio, and you can hear them in the background hollering, Harry, Harry. Not that many folks made it up in Fort Worth. Robin's 21-month-old son at home in Spiegelville, Texas with the in-laws. It doesn't have a crowd. The Wall Street Journal is written for busy people. It doesn't waste your time with what you don't want to know. Make sure that you don't miss anything you have to know. Accurate, to the point, complete. The Wall Street Journal. It's all here. Get all the business news you need when you need it. Get the Wall Street Journal, delivered for six months for $53. Phone toll-free, 800-228-2210. That's six months, $53. Delivered every business day. Phone 800-228-2210. Subscribe now. Back in action in Atlantic City, New Jersey, Robin Blake and Harry Arroyo. Have you noticed any change in the tactics of Robin Blake, Gil? Uh, yes, he's, he's not uh, reaching as much as he was earlier in the fight. Uh, consequently, he's able to get a little closer and, without getting nailed. In his corner, they told him to move, move in behind his jab, and that's what he's trying to do now. There, he reached again. Anytime he reaches, he pays for it. There, he just left himself wide open again. difference in this fight is the fact that Arroyo keeps his hands up and leads with his face. Arroyo still displaying that patience that we've seen. He turns south for now. Mm -hmm. How do you like that? Now, well, now he's back where he belongs. Anytime he reaches with that left hand, he gets nailed. Arroyo just takes a little step back. Robin extends too much, he gets nailed. 
He has to move in behind his jab. Somehow, he has to try to get inside. But what a tough job against a kid like Arroyo. That's an aspect of this sport that most folks, uh, most folks I don't think, understand or appreciate, the defensive aspects of it. That is, that's right. Most people, you know, Americans are all for offense anyway, whether it's football or, or anything else. But uh, you can learn to appreciate the subtleties of a good defense. We are at the point, I think, Gil, where Robin Blake has got to put him down. I don't think he can win on, on rounds. I don't either. And Blake has the potential to do that, but has not shown or not been given any opportunity. So now they're back in the corner, and there's a pretty good right from Robin Blake. One minute to go in round number seven. Watch your heads now, right? Referee Arthur McCanty warns him about the use of their heads. I wouldn't like to see either fighter lose this fight on it. But... Good combination for Blake. He tagged him with a right. He hurt a royal covers up right right away. And he hurt he hurt a royal with that right hand. And Arroyo is not as offensive as he's not using offense at all now. He's a little too careful. Is he protecting the fight, do you think? I think so. I think they've told me he's a little overcautious now. He has to get Robin's attention. He has to land a couple of good, solid punches. Another good left hand by Robin Blake. Ten seconds to go in round number seven. You're looking at the unexpected granola bar. Unexpected. Unexpectedly was not crumbling. Quaker makes it chewy. Quaker chewy granola bars. A granola bar with chocolate chips. Quaker makes it moist and chewy. You can certainly see the difference in a Quaker chewy granola bar, but it's a lot more fun to taste it. Now in two new flavors, peanut butter and chocolate chip and chunky nut and raisin. It's delicious. in action in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Round number eight. Vermont Chris Gil Clancy with Robin Blake and Harry Arroyo providing us with a heck of a lightweight fight. Well, Blake has made a good comeback in the last two rounds, Brian. Uh, I feel that Harry Arroyo is right now too defensive. That's what he has to do. He has to land a couple of good, solid punches. As we said at the outset, it's the biggest fight of Harry Arroyo's life. National television this afternoon. He's ranked number 15 in the world. He has not been able to devote full time to his boxing career, he's worked as a janitor and was paid in milk for the barter system at one job and has most recently been working seasonally as a park policeman. I bring that up only to, to ask you if at this point in the fight, knowing he has fought so well, he might start to envision what might lie beyond this. I don't, I, I really don't think that's entering into it, uh, Brian. He's concentrating so hard on, on the guy that's in there, I think everything else is uh, secondary. Nonetheless, he can't afford to sit back. Can he? Absolutely not. He's, he has to go out and, and really win a big round again. He's letting Blake back into the fight. Both of these young men are fathers. Robin Blake and his wife Denise have a son, Brandon, I mentioned, and Mary Arroyo has a, a son, Harry Jr., who was four years old from a previous marriage, watching back home in Youngstown, Ohio. Now, in the first two or three rounds, Blake was at, uh, excuse, uh, Harry Arroyo was able to land his right hand almost at will. He has stopped throwing that right hand. When he does throw it, now he throws it underneath. Midway through the eighth round, 10 rounds scheduled, a lightweight fight. We're back here again tomorrow on CBS with Stevie Romero and Tyrone Crawley, the man who defeated Robin Blake back in October. Oh, good right hook. He's got to go for the knockout, and he's got two and a half rounds to get it. Well, he knew he hurt Harry with that punch. Now he just threw a good straight left hand. Good defensive job by Arroyo to bob those punches. Yes, he moves his head very, very well. He, I... One minute to go. Blake with a smile on his face. Another good left hand by Robin Blake. When we wrote the script, we wrote it erroneously. We had Arroyo starting out slow and coming on strong. It was Blake who was a snail in the first few rounds, and now he has increased his pace. So much for the racing form. <laughs> seconds. Good combination from Robin Blake. 
But again, look at look at the bobbing style of the Royals. That's right. He's, he's making the bomb and expend a lot of energy. Ten seconds in the eighth round, Atlantic City, New Jersey. Your face. Shaving irritates it. I need ice blue aqua velva. Beecham's aqua velva turns red hot razor burn to cool smooth comfort. Smells great too. There's something about an ice blue aqua velva man. Also from Beecham. Grow a beard, huh? Not under my roof. But Dad, this electric razor is rough on my face. Try electric shave. It sets up your beard so whiskers stand up and your razor glides. Electric shave! That's for an electric razor what lather does for a blade. <laughs> There are three judges scoring this fight. John Stewart, Phil Newman, and Tom Kazmarek. There's not an individual task. It's getting much closer. Well, it, it looked as if Blake was out of the fight, uh, Ray, but I haven't won it the last three rounds in a row. Made it a very, very close fight. If that is the case, and of course, Gil and I are just guessing. That's all we're doing here from our perspective. But Blake must win, I think, the last two to, to have any shot in the decision, but it might be that close of getting there. Arroyo landed some real good shots, slip punches, and counted beautifully. Arroyo with that left-right combination. Well, he, now he's starting to throw that right hand again. He stopped, he stopped using it. I don't know why. He's, he's allowing, he's allowing uh, Robin to put the pressure on him now. Before, earlier in the fight, he was throwing those right hands, moving in behind his jab beautifully. Now Blake with Arroyo on the ropes. And Arthur McConaughey steps between them. That's kind of a wild one. Oh, another right hand by Arroyo. Two solid punches, man. Now Arroyo puts those punches together and comes out of the corner and backs Blake away. Arroyo was a little tired, though, man. But he did land a cup. See the way he threw that right hand? That's a sign of being tired. No snap. Not straight through it around. And you can see him starting to gasp for breath as well. Harry Arroyo at age 26. Robin Blake, the 21-year-old youngster from the Plains of West Texas. He has Blake in a little trouble right now. Good left jab from Arroyo. Now the combination. He has Blake in trouble. Midway through the ninth round. Here's that right hand. Left hook, right hand. We mentioned earlier that Blake had expended a lot of energy when he had uh, Harry on the ropes, and it's showing now. He now still doesn't seem to have too much left. Arroyo getting a little weary now as well, and understandably so. Yes, this has been a tough fight. Boxing beautifully. You see that move side to side? Look at the way he's back to up with three, three left jabs. But you can say, Gil, what you said, the, the sting is just not there. You can sense the weariness in the combinations he's throwing. But backs away from that. He has Blake in trouble. 30 seconds to go in the ninth round. Now Blake comes back. Well, he threw a good straight left hand underneath, and that's a good place to hit a guy late in the fight when he's tired. Blake. But some body punches from Arroyo. Let's go into the corner with Robin Blake. Dave Gorman, his manager. Joe Barrientos, his trainer, with Sugar Ray Phillips. Yeah, let's let's time got out. You can't win by just... Hit him two, three times. You've got to finish this guy off. You understand this? Can yeah. you do it? Yeah, I can do it. Good? Okay, go on and do it. Let's go do it. What round is this? Tenth round. Okay. Let's go, baby. How do you feel? Ed Sullivan with Harry Arroyo. Three minutes away, Harry. You seem to be very calm. When you tie him up, Harry, put your head down. Don't get butted. Tie him up good and tight. Eliano just Kill outside the ropes. Down. And the crowd picks up the chant of Harry. Let's go now. Last one. Pin down. God love you, baby. You heard Joe Barry enters, Gil. Tell Robin Blake you've got to take him out. Yes, that's what he said. He says you're going to have to knock him out to win this fight. Here's where they're both have to gonna go into that super reserve. Here's where you find out what kind of an athletic guy he is. Neither one of them has much left. 
A quick glance at 24-year-old Elise Arroyo celebrating her birthday today. And now settle back and see who's got the most left. Well, Blake started out with a beautiful combination. Started the mound out that way. Now he's changed his style. He's stalking him like a tiger. But Harry just doesn't throw that right hand. He had the opening there. He wouldn't let it go. Good right then. He's worked that right hand overtime in this fight. But again, he came in with a reputation of not having a great right hand. Well, I, I have seen it before. I like this right hand. He throws a nice straight right hand. But again, he's allowing the puncher to get set, which he, he should not be doing. Interesting that his attorney, Donald Hill, referred to him as a prospect. The man's uh, 26 years of age. I, I think he's beyond that uh, stage. Uh, yes, yes, I read that too, and I thought that uh, <laughs> he was a little harsh on his own fighter. Now Blake with Arroyo in the corner, and here's where those defensive skills become so important. Yeah. And look at the combination. Beautiful combination. Look at the way he makes Blake. And look at the way he's nailing Blake after he makes a miss. A great counterpunch right from Harry Arroyo. But Blake is coming on all the time. He really wants this fight. He knows what he has to do. Oh, another good right hand counter by Harry Arroyo, and a good right hook by Blake. Remaining in this 10-round bout. Tagged him again. Did Robin Blake. Good combination. Three-punch combination. Again, Arroyo now is being too defensive. Arroyo tries the combination. Robin Blake has lost his last time out. At one point, he was on the verge of a title fight. He lost to Tyrone Crowley. Harry Arroyo has never had this big of a fight. And they've got about 45 seconds left to settle the issue. Well, a lot of people can be affected by whatever hand is raised in this fight. It affects managers, trainers, but especially the fighters. One guy can go on to become the champion, and you just never know how much this loss. Oh, a low blow low by blow. Harry Royal. Very low. 30 seconds to go. Mercati cautions him. Was a glancing overhand right had a little bit behind it from Robin Blake. You see, but look at look at Arroyo with those well, punching skills. Now you don't know what the judges are watching. A lot of times judges like guys that throw a lot of punches, whether they land or not. This, this has become a tough fight to score now, Vern. feet in Atlantic City. People are standing up and deservedly so. These guys really fought their hearts out. It was just a great fight between two very, very good lightweights. Now, while we wait for the decision, let's go to New York City and Brent Musburger. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Resorts International Casino Hotel, here is the official scoring. We have a close but unanimous decision. Judge John Stewart scores the bout five rounds to four, one even. Judge Tommy Kazmarek scores it six rounds to three, one even. Phil Newman scores the bout six rounds to three, one even for the winner. And still undefeated from Youngstown, Ohio, Harry Arroyo. fight of your life I'd just like for you to comment oh I'd like to say thank you to everyone that's supporting me I'd like to say hello to my son Harry jr. and I can say hello to a lot of people but there's so many I'll just say hello but to one particular person uh, his name is <coughs> excuse me his name is uh, Frank and uh, he was in a car accident a few weeks ago and I hope he's still in all right I tell you he 
my opinion, he's the best fighter. Let's get Robin today. in here as well. He's the best fighter today. And uh, I trained really hard, like this was a title fight. And I guess it all paid off for me. Robin, you, you did put up a heck of a fight, but you got off to a little bit of a slow start. We expected that from Harry and not from you. Well, uh, what can I say? Uh, I come in here to fight and I got off slow, everything. I guess I come in the ring cold, but I'll tell you what, I, I thought I won the fight, to tell you the truth, because I, I kept coming on the last rounds and, and uh, scoring good shots and everything. Had him backing up, had him moving away from me, and I thought I won the fight, you know, and, and uh, I don't know what to say. All I can do is thank my Lord and Savior for uh, giving me strength to, to carry out the fight. Okay, Robin, there'll be other days, and to you, Harry Arroyo, our uh, sincerest congratulations to you. It was a whale of a fight. We've got more coming up tomorrow. Let's go back to Brent Musburger in New York.